The Outer Worlds 2 is built on Unreal Engine 5, a heavy engine to use as a base. This reflects its performance, which I will show you throughout the video. The game offers a decent number of options to tweak, which can deliver some really impressive performance improvements. On paper, that is. You will see what I mean later in the video. Let's start with the CPU performance. Using CPU intensive settings on an R5 3600X, performance leaves a lot to be desired. Also, the game always uses software ray tracing by default, and you have the option to enable hardware ray tracing, and both negatively affect CPU performance. In this case, using hardware RT decreases CPU performance significantly, going from an average of 48 FPS to 33 FPS, and the R5 3600X can sometimes even dip below 30 FPS, and this is just by turning on hardware RT. So, the base CPU performance of this game is very low, whether you use hardware RT or not. It's just a matter of how you like your frame rate, a stable 30 FPS or a cinematic frame rate. I will leave that up to you. As for upscaling, going from native TAA to TSR quality improves image clarity a bit, which preserves details in the image. While the game supports FSR4, as my GPU doesn't support it, it falls back to a previous version and it seems to look softer and is the most unstable with lots of shimmering and aliasing on surfaces and objects. XESS Ultra Quality has the softest image out of all the upscalers, basically erasing all the details on surfaces. It's a blurry mess, and I'd recommend you avoid it at all costs in this game. Last but not least, DLSS Quality, which looks the best here. It has the crispiest image quality, and it's the most stable out of all the solutions. As for ghosting on particle effects, it seems like XESS and DLSS seem to have some trouble handling them, but they are still close to the other upscalers. Thankfully, the ghosting isn't that bad to the point where it would become a real issue. If your GPU supports it, I recommend DLSS quality. If not, Either use FSR4 if your GPU supports it, or use TSR upscaling. Hardware ray tracing affects reflections, shadows, and global illumination. Reflections seem to look a bit higher res with it turned on. Global illumination can look noticeably better, or look almost no different, depending on the scene. Shadows can look a lot better and more accurate, especially on small and decorative objects. However, using hardware ray tracing, at least as of the making of this video, introduces major visual artifacts, most noticeably on some shadows, as it makes them look visually noisy and grainy, and they are very distracting. It also tends to disable shadows on some objects in the environment, for some reason, like these cables over here. Performance-wise, when GPU limited, it surprisingly barely affects performance. However, CPU performance takes a major hit, as I showed before, it's so significant, it needs to be pointed out. For these reasons, I heavily recommend disabling this option. The screen effects setting enables things like chromatic aberration, depth of field, high resolution lens flares, etc. And even on very high, the performance impact is negligible. The view distance setting gradually increases the level of detail and grass render distance. The improvement from high to very high is very hard to notice as it is hard to find a scene where the changes can be spotted, and performance-wise, it has a very small impact. But the CPU performance hit can be a bit more on very high, which is why I recommend using high for the best balance. You just got yourself a small boost to CPU performance, which is heavily needed in this game. The shadows setting gradually increases their quality and diffusion with each option. The very high option can decrease performance significantly. Also, the shadow noise issue is apparent across all options, while on very high, it is almost not noticeable. I recommend high for the best balance. The texture setting seems to increase resolution only when going from low to medium. The other options further improve texture filtering and allocate more VRAM for textures.
The visual effect setting is supposed to control the quality of things like explosions, bullets, fire effects, etc. In my testing, I could only find this scene where going from low to medium made a difference. I tested a few other scenarios and I wasn't able to find any difference in image quality or performance. I recommend using high just to be safe. The foliage setting gradually increases vegetation density and quality up to high, while very high seems to only increase the draw distance of foliage. Performance wise, I tested in both GPU and CPU limited scenarios, and the impact was surprisingly negligible on both, which is why I recommend using very high. The global illumination setting gradually increases its quality and reduces the visual noise that it introduces with each option. Performance noticeably decreases on high and very high. In fact, the FPS impact on very high is so large it can almost have your FPS. An important thing to keep in mind is that on foliage, low and medium have visible shimmering and everything just looks too dark and inaccurate. While this issue is fixed on high and very high, looks like we are forced to use high for the best balance. Reflections are turned off on low. Medium and high look basically the same, while very high increases reflection resolution, but comes at a small but measurable cost. During gameplay, you'd be hard pressed to actually notice the difference in reflection resolution. Only use very high if you have some performance to spare. For the crowd density setting, I haven't managed to find an area with lots of NPCs yet, making testing the setting especially hard, so I tested its performance impact on whatever semi-busy area I could find in the early game, and my tests concluded that there is no measurable performance difference between low and very high on both GPU and CPU limited scenarios. But if you manage to find an area with lots of NPCs, and where this setting makes a difference, tell us the results in the comments. But for now, just keep this on high to be safe. Here are the optimized settings. If you find my videos useful and would like to help me keep making them, to support me even further, I offer my optimization guide videos as downloadable files on my Patreon, so you can watch them without the YouTube compression. You also get to have your name appear in these videos as well. Now for the performance. Using max settings at native 1440p, the frame rate is averaging around 15 fps, with the frame times being as smooth as a mountain. Switching to the optimized settings, still at native 1440p, we managed to increase the average fps to around 27 fps. That is still way too low, and definitely lower than I expected. Only when using DLSS quality does the frame rate go over 30 fps averaging around 36 fps to be exact. This game definitely performs way lower than it should, mainly due to the heavy baseline performance of Unreal Engine 5, especially since the game utilizes Lumen by default, which is software ray tracing, and we can't turn it off. Considering the terrible implementation of ray tracing in this game, having an option to completely disable it and fall back to other methods would have been appreciated. What do you guys think?